Hi guys, today's lesson is for March the 31st and we are on page 273. Um, we're going to be talking about Eastern Africa, but before we do that, let's review. Yesterday we talked about the different types of people, but some of the main people that we talked about was the Tureg people. And um, what were the main occupations of the Tureg people? Well, they had farmers and herders, traders, and they were guides for caravans. And you remember the Turk people wore the blue um, kind of clothing and it only covered their eyes. And so um, they were called the blue people. And um, so today we're gonna talk about the Eastern Africa's and the colonial people um, during the coastal cities. Look at your map and you'll see what island also had a part of Eastern African coastal trade? Um, what do you think that would be? Well, I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. Madagascar was, you gotta excuse the noise in the background. Um, I have a lot of people in the house, so I'm sorry for the noise. But anyway, and then it said, um, what con contributed or contributed to the development of the Shona civilization in ancient Zimbabwe? We're going to be talking about that today. Okay, so if you haven't read your page, you're on page 273, go ahead and read that now. It shouldn't take you that long, um, about two minutes, and I'll give you some time to read that. And think about this focus question. What were some common features of cities on Africa's eastern coast? Give you a few minutes. Okay, if you look at your definition for today, um, Swahili is one of the words that you're gonna be um, learning it's a Bantu, remember we talked about the Bantu people, a Bantu language commonly spoken in Eastern Africa, and they still speak that language today. Look at your picture, it says, what types of goods might these people be loading onto ships? Well, let's talk about these people in just a moment, okay? If you've done your reading, where did the Shona trade their gold? Where did the Shona trade their gold? Well, they traded it on the eastern um, coast in cities built especially for trade. So if you look at your map again, and you look at Aden and Askum and Magashtushu and Mombasa and Kilwa and all these little things along the coast, people would come along the coast and they could do trade there. It was easier because they could stop at the ports and do their trading for their very for their goods um, there, okay? Um, what Who controlled these cities in the 900s? Well, the Arabians and the Persian merchants. They were the ones who held um, control, had more control. And if you look, the two most important um, trading cities were Mangashtushu and Sofala. They were two of the most important trading cities there, okay? Now, go back to the map and look at the different cities. The city of Mangashtu was located now what is Somalia, and Sofala is today Moz Mozambique. Mozambique, sorry. And then you have another question here. Along the coastal cities were spread out and not part of the empire. What did they have in common? Well, they spoke predominantly, the Swahili people um, were predominantly Islamic, and they used the same trading language. Swahili, sorry, that was one of the questions. And the, how did the Swahili get its name? Well, it, they got its name from the Arabic word meaning coast meaning coast, what types of items were traded in addition to gold? Well, ivory, well, you remember we talked about, where did you get the ivory? Ivory was from 
um, elephant tusks, okay? You had rhinoceros horns, tortoise shells, animal skins, and even live animals. They also brought, um, so what do you think, some of these things today, and some of it's illegal, but when we talk about stewardship, we're talking about taking care of the things that God gives us. Um, you know, taking care of our animals or our money, being careful with that. Well, with rhinoceros horns and ivory from elephants, tusks are still in demand today. Ivory is often used for artistic purposes. Sometimes you can get necklaces from them. Sometimes you can get, you know, trinkets or something. Um, a rhinoceros horn is ground into a powder that some people believe is has medicinal value that's very good for healing. But the international sale of both ivory and rhinoceros horn is illegal, but they have a large black market. Black market means they do it secretly, illegally, and very, very expensive. Um, poachers are people who kill elephants and rhinoceros is in Africa just for sport. Um, and um, the population of both these animals are significant in decline. They, they can become very extinct if we're not careful because of the, the greediness of these people, okay? How might people have wise dominion over animals such as elephants and rhinoceroses? Well, you remember when we talked about the creation mandate, God gave us this earth for our use and our benefit, but we need to be mindful of it. We just had Earth Day. We need to take care of our planet, you know, being careful. I'm not this crazy person that says you have to drink, you know, paper straws and um, recycle all the time because I sometimes don't recycle all the time. I'm not the best at it, but we still need to be careful and be thankful. If God gave you a pet, you treat your pets nicely and um, you take care of them. Animals were given for food in the beginning. You know, well, not in the beginning because Adam and Eve sinned and they used to have all this wonderful fruit but because of sin. Then God kicked them out and then they had to get their own food. But God gave us animals to eat. Now, I'm not going to go and eat an elephant or a rhinoceros, but I do like a good hamburger now and then. Um, I like bacon. And so God gave us, and that's in Genesis 9, 2 to 3. People were still expected to care for these and be wise about it. I'm not the kind of person, no, I'm not against hunting. If you wanna go hunt a deer and that's your sport, but I don't think that you should go hunt a deer just so you can chop off its head and stick it on a mount and put it in your, in your house. Um, most people eat the meat from the deer and that's their way of having a deer burger or something or venison. Um, Endangering a species is not wise use of resources and it is illegal. Matthew 6, 29 says that God takes care of animals. Proverbs 12, 10 says that a righteous person is kind to animals, but a wicked person is cruel. I hate when you see those commercials of animals who have been treated poorly in there. It's so pathetic. Um, I can't imagine hurting an innocent animal, whether it be a cat, dog, a squirrel, I, not spiders. I know they're not animals, but you can squish them all you want. <laughs> uh -huh. And then, but that's something to think about. God gave us these animals to love and enjoy and to eat and to, um, you know, take care of. And notice that a dog loves unconditionally. You know, you can be and you're saddest. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter how you feel. If you have a pet, especially a dog, they are so loyal and they're so sweet. Besides traders, what other type of people live on the eastern coast? Well, a lot of people on the eastern coast, whether in Maine or Vermont or Massachusetts, a lot of them are fishermen. And some are farmers, masons, and builders. Um, and how did builders show resourcefulness 
in choosing building material. They made houses out of coral, a matter found off their coast. So that was something that they used. Um, another thing, how was coral prepared to be used as building material? It was brought out of the ocean and exposed to air, which hardened the coral into sturdy material. A mason is like a person who uses stones and, um, and builds, and they use the stones to build um, buildings back then. Um, and then, once again, go to the map, and we talked about the, um, the key city, or the, the, the island that was off the coast, Madagascar, that's something. And then, look at the illustration. I said, what do you think could be inside the, the barrels that he's getting ready to ship. Well, if you look, some of the things that they um, traded was, um, let's see, gold and ivory. We already talked about ivory. Um, rhinoceros horns, we talked about that. Tortoise shells, and that's another thing. They didn't have to kill the turtle for it. And animal skins. A lot of times they use the animal skins for clothing, for covering their tents, and places like this. So this today, that is our lesson for today. I want you to make sure that you read it and make sure that you're sending me your three um, questions. I'm not getting them from all of you. You do not have to do the activity manual at all. Um, but you do need to send me the three questions so that I know that you're doing this material because now that we're going on to May 1st, I need to have something where to grade you from because there's not going to be any tests or quizzes. If you have any questions about any of your history assignments, um, then go ahead and text me. A lot of you are doing that through, through mine. Some of you are doing through email. Some are doing that through the YouTube videos. I have 24 of you in my class, but there's probably only seven that I hear from every day. Hopefully, you, the others are doing the assignments. I know that it's a tough time, but these are only three classes that you have to deal with. And so I want you to make sure that you are doing your assignment and I'd like to hear from you. I miss you guys so much. Happy Sports Day. I hope you're all taking, um, doing the, um, what should I call it, the Spirit Week. Make sure that you post your pictures on the Facebook middle, page, middle school page. And um, hope to see you guys really soon. I miss you. If I don't see you in person, I'll see you on Zoom sometime. Okay? I love you guys. Mwah.